Interior of a classroom with many wooden desks arranged in several rows. A girl around the age of 20, long brown hair, wearing a white blouse and black pants. On the legs, nude. Slightly translucent tights and black imitation leather or leather ballerinas, with golden decorations on the heels and colored stripes on the inside. The position of both legs lowered to the ground predominates here. Occasionally, a girl partially pulls a random foot out of one shoe. The fossilized remains of the largest penguin in history have been found. Millions of years ago, birds that lived on Earth were much larger than those we see today. Record-breaking remains of two ancient penguin species have recently been found. One of them, the researchers found, weighed over 150 kilograms, more than three times the weight of the largest penguins living today. Scientists in New Zealand have discovered the fossils of two previously unknown ancient penguin species. One of them has been recognized by researchers as the largest penguin that has ever existed on Earth. The fossilized remains of penguins were found in New Zealand. They belonged to two different species. They found it in a rather interesting way. Well, at the turn of 2016 and 2017, in North Otago, on the New Zealand South Island, boulders were discovered whose age was estimated at approximately 57 million years. Much more interesting, however, was what was found in these boulders, and they were penguin fossils. The age of these birds has been estimated at 59.5 to 55.5 million years. This means they lived roughly 5 to 10 million years after non-flying dinosaurs went extinct at the end of the Cretaceous. The larger of the penguin species discovered was named Kumamanu Fordyce, in honor of eminent researcher Ewan Fordyce, professor emeritus of the University of Otago. Also, the smaller of the penguins was named after the renowned scientist, Petradoptes Stonehousei. The first part of the name given to it comes from the Greek words, Petra, rock and, diptes, diver. The second part is a tribute to Dr. Bernard Stonehouse, who made history by being the first to observe the full reproductive cycle of emperor penguins. The second of the newly discovered penguins was more numerous in the fossil record, which allowed its skeleton to be carefully studied. The Kumi Man 4 Dicey fossils in particular were quite interesting because of their size. Using lasers, the found remains were scanned, which allowed for the creation of the digital models. Particular attention was paid to the fin bones. Their sizes were analyzed for other fossils discovered and compared to their equivalent sizes in living birds. This calculated the degree to which they were reduced, which in turn allowed them to estimate the size of the newly discovered penguin species. It was found that these penguins must have weighed about 154 kilograms, more than three times as much as any living penguins today. The largest penguins alive today usually weigh between 22 and 45 kilograms. Comma. It turns out that even relatively small penguins from almost 60 million years ago were still larger than the largest living emperor penguins today. Interestingly, these ancient penguin species had many primitive elements in their anatomy from the point of view of their modern relatives. These include, for example, thinner thin bones and muscle attachment points more reminiscent of those seen in flying birds. What, however, used them such sizes as Kumamanu for Dicey? Well, the bigger penguins simply had it easier to survive. Not only could they hunt larger prey, but it was also easier for them to maintain their body temperature in cool waters. Effects of the dark spacecraft hitting an asteroid. 
Last September, the DART spacecraft crashed into the asteroid Dimorphos, a small body 160 meters in diameter. This deliberate collision was intended to alter the trajectory of the object, in the first test of Earth's defense against the threat of asteroids from space. It was already known that the test was successful, but now scientists have reconstructed the impact and its aftermath, using data collected by various observatories, and determined how successful the hit was. On September 26, telescopes around the world set their sights on the Dimorphos asteroid to record a historic test of our ability to defend Earth from a potentially planet-threatening asteroid. This was the first experiment conducted by mankind, which aimed to change the trajectory of an object in space. The DART, Double Asteroid Redirection Test, probe hit the asteroid Dimorphos, a small body only 160 meters in diameter. Dimorphos is the moon of a larger rock, 780 meters in diameter, called Didymos. None of these asteroids threatened the Earth, but they were considered ideal targets to test the possibility of changing the trajectory of a cosmic object. This was the first successful planetary defense test in which an asteroid's orbit was modified by a spacecraft impact. Now, in a series of scientific papers published in the journal Nature, Scientists describe the final moments before DART hits the asteroid, recreating the impact and analyzing how it changed the asteroid's momentum and orbit, and how the debris from the impact behaved. After analyzing data collected during the impact, scientists concluded that the technique used in the DART mission may indeed work for an asteroid on a collision course with Earth. Small asteroids are much harder to detect than their larger cousins, and our solar system is full of debris from early planet formation. We currently know of tens of thousands of smaller asteroids orbiting our planet, but these are certainly not all of them. These larger, huge boulders that could destroy humanity if they hit the Earth have been catalogued and are under constant surveillance weighing less than 600 kilograms. The refrigerator-sized dart probe hit an asteroid the size of the Great Pyramid of Giza at a speed of 22,500 kilometers per hour. Dimorphos took 11 hours and 55 minutes to circle Didymos before impact. Analysis of data collected by ground-based and space-based telescopes showed that the DART spacecraft changed the orbit of Dimorphos by 32 minutes, shortening it to 11 hours and 23 minutes. The measurement has an uncertainty margin of about plus or minus 2 minutes. This result is much greater than expected. The DART probe impact itself produced a long plume of debris trailing behind Dimorphos. Jian Yang Li of the Planetary Science Institute and colleagues described how material was ejected by the impact and formed a 1,500 km tail of debris that could be admired for almost a month. Scientists have determined that such a large change in orbit was caused not only by the spacecraft crashing into a space rock. Most of the change was due to the recoil effect of all the ejected material going into space, which Ariel Graykowski of the SETI Institute and colleagues estimated to be between 0.3 and 0.5%. The total mass of the asteroid. Analyzing all the data collected allowed scientists to understand why the strike was so effective. One factor is that the dart hit a spot about 25 meters from the center of the asteroid, maximizing the force of the impact. Another is that large amounts of asteroid debris flew out upon impact. The recoil from this force pushed the asteroid further away from its previous trajectory. Researchers also determined that the impact of the probe reduced the speed of Dimorphos by 2.7 mm per second, but thanks to the ejection of matter, this effect was several times greater. 
NASA also released a time-lapse video of data captured by the Hubble Space Telescope showing the effects of the collision. The footage shows startling and rapid changes as dust and bits of debris were ejected into space. When the DART spacecraft hit the asteroid, the researchers estimated that more than 1,000 tons of dust and rocks were ejected from the asteroid. The film also provides new data on how the debris was dispersed in a complex pattern in the days following the impact. Although NASA has only demonstrated the technique on one asteroid, the results could be broadly applicable to possible future similar missions, the researchers say. We can quickly design an asteroid retrajectory mission if there is such a threat. We know it has a very good chance of success, says Frank Marchese of the SETI Institute in Mountain View, California.